Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting equation with complex numbers. I call this equation interesting because we have an exponent that doubles i to the power z is 2 times i. So we're also going to be looking at some uh, real versions of this problem but before that I want to point out something that's pretty important. Some people think that this equation has no solutions because when you take the absolute values, you have i on the left-hand side at the base, its absolute value is 1, but on the right-hand side we have a number whose absolute value is equal to 2. So in other words, if you take the absolute value on both sides, we get something like this, and then from here, if you take the z out, then you should be getting something like this, but then the absolute value of i is equal to 1, so can we get a solution for this equation? No, it's not going to work, right? But the problem is this is not an identity. It's not always true if z is a non-real number. Okay, as xj will 1, thank you for the comment, as he pointed out in my one of my recent videos that had the z to the power absolute value of z, that identity is not always an identity, or it's not always true. Anyways, so that's something to talk about, and now I want to show you some real possibilities or the real versions of this problem. So I said a power that doubles, right? Can we use a number that kind of doubles? For example, x, I want to use a variable base in this case, x to the power n equals 2x. I mean, i is a constant, so I should probably use a constant base, but let's just go ahead and consider this. Can we solve this equation? Absolutely. You can go ahead and divide both sides by x and then raise both sides to the power 1 over n minus 1 and you'll get a solution. Of course, n equals 1 is not going to give you a solution. Well, it does have a solution, but it just doesn't come out of here. x equals 0 would be the solution in that case. But other than that, you'll have solutions. Okay? Or we could possibly do this. Just uh, log both sides with base 10, right? That would be log, L-O-G. And if you log both sides, uh, you can move the n to the front and log x equals log 2x. And then from here, n equals log 2x divided by log x. What's the difference? We're solving for x here, we're solving for n here. So that's the difference. Make sense? Okay, great. Now let's see if we can apply this to our problem. Maybe we're going to take a look at it at the end. But I want to show you uh, a solution method and then we're also going to be checking the results from Wolfram Alpha. Okay, great. Let's uh, solve this equation first. So we have i to the power z equals 2i. In other words, we have a power that doubles. Okay, so we're going to be solving for z because i is a constant. Now, by the way, if you try this with another constant, could we find a solution like, let's say, c to the power z is equal to 2c, and suppose z is real, are you going to get any solutions? You can go ahead and test them out. Anyways, to be able to solve this problem, I'm going to go ahead and write everything in polar form. i can be written as e to the power i times pi over 2, but remember, uh, you can always add multiples of 2 pi to it, so it's going to look like this. And then if you raise both sides to the power z, this is i, and that's i to the power z, it's going to equal 2i, and 2i can be written as 2 times e to the power i times pi over 2 again, but instead of writing pi over 2, I can also write pi over 2 plus multiples of 2 pi, right? Now, in this case, to simplify things a little bit, if n is equal to 0, then we're going to get e to the power i z pi over 2 equals 2 times e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi m. So you can also assume m equals 0, which is something that I'm going to do towards the end. But first of all, I'm going to solve this equation. Okay, and now we're going to compare our answers to uh, the result from Wolfram Alpha and see if they agree. Okay. At this point, it makes sense if we natural log both sides, so we can bring these down, and that's going to give us i z times pi over 2 equals ln 2. By the way, that's a real ln, plus i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi m. I forgot to say, but n and m are integers. Okay, makes sense? Now, to solve for z, we're going to divide everything by i pi over 2, so it's going to look like this, ln 2 divided by i pi over 2. 
and then when you multiply or divide this by i pi over 2 you can kind of divide like this obviously i is going to cancel out here and here and then pi is also going to cancel out we're going we're to get to that but we can flip and multiply by 2 so that's going to be 2 ln 2 multi uh, divided by i pi and at this point i can go ahead and multiply by negative i i wouldn't divide by i or I wouldn't multiply by i, I would just multiply by negative i because negative i squared is 1. So I got rid of that. And we're going to have a minus sign. Here, if you take out the pi, you're going to get 1 half plus 2m divided by pi. But then you can go ahead and multiply by 2 here. This 2 will also flip and multiply. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and uh, rearrange this a little bit. I can write this as follows. First of all, if you distribute to 2, you're going to get... 1 plus 4m divided by pi and then minus i times 2 ln 2 divided by pi. Interesting that we have a pi at the bottom, right? Cool. So now, can we also assume that m is equal to 0? Well, if you are interested in principal values, then m equals 0 will give you a simpler solution. So z is going to look like, I believe I forgot to cancel out something about oh yes when the pi canceled out I should have a 1 here yes not a pi so then we're gonna have a 1 here as well so that when I simplify it's gonna be a lot simpler yes when m is equal to 0 it's just gonna give me 1 minus i times 2 ln 2 over pi okay great so that looks like a solution but I also want to talk about something else which should hopefully give us the exact same solution. But again, I made a lot of assumptions. I assumed that m is equal to 0, n is equal to 0. Can we get away with that all the time? Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem from the real perspective. Remember how we solved the real version? We had i to the z equals 2i. And then my question is, can we just natural log both sides and that way, you know, go for the solution? Uh, yes, uh, instead of log, which is base 10, I think natural log would be a better idea. And now you can go ahead and move the z. This will become z times ln i equals ln 2i. And then from here, z can be written as ln 2i divided by ln i. Just like with the uh, real version, remember we got ln 2x over ln x or log 2x over log x. Same idea, just replace x with i and you'll get the same result. Cool. So this looks like a simpler solution, but how do you reconcile these two solutions, right? Are they the same? Are they identical or are they totally different? Or is this wrong, right? Let's go ahead and find out. And then we're going to look at Wolfram Alpha. Here, uh, here's what you need to remember. How do you find the natural log of a complex number? Let's go, go ahead and call this number W. And you can basically do ln absolute value of w plus i times the argument of w. That's the general solution. So ln 2i is just going to be ln 2, which is the modulus, ln of the modulus, plus i has uh, pi over 2. So we can kind of write it like this. And then at the bottom, we have the ln i, which is i times pi over 2. Great. If you go ahead and split it up, from here you're going to get 1. And then from the other one, you're going to get 2 ln 2 divided by pi and of course don't forget to multiply by i so that means we're going to get the exact same solution but again the simplified version because we assumed m and n are both zero let's go ahead and take a look at the result from wolfram alpha if you go ahead and solve it use wolfram alpha to solve it you're going to get this result so why is it different from ours what's the difference right this part seems to agree but we have an additional 4 pi n because if you divide it by pi, you get 4 n. And the reason behind that is whenever you have a solution uh, for this equation, and if z is, suppose the solution that we found was z sub 0 or just w, let's just say, or I don't know, z prime plus 4 n is going to be i to the power z prime times i to the power 4 n and i to the 4 is 1. That's why including this will give us all the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.